In this lecture, we're going to discuss Gaussian's law for magnetism. But before we state what Gaussian's law for magnetism tells us, let's recall Gaussian's law for electricity. Now, in the electric case, recall that we have two types of electric charges. We have the negative electric charge and the positive electric charge. And these two types of electric charges essentially exist independently of one another. So let's suppose we have the following isolated positive charge as shown by the following orange region. Now anytime we have a positive electric charge, the electric field lines produced by this positive charge will begin on the charge and will extend outward as shown by the following blue arrows. So these blue arrows signify the direction of our electric field lines. Now, let's suppose we choose a surface known as the Gaussian surface. So the Gaussian surface is outlined by the following green region. Now we know by Gaussian's law that our electric flux is equal to our closed integral of the dot product of our electric field and our infinitely small area vector dA and this is equal equal to the ratio of the total charge enclosed inside our Gaussian surface divided by epsilon naught where epsilon naught is a constant known as the permeativity of free space. So this left side is equal to this right side and this equation is known as Gaussian's law for electricity. Now let's discuss the analogous law for magnetism and let's begin by examining the following magnet. So in the electric case we discussed electric charges. In the magnetic case we're going to examine magnets. So let's suppose we have the following bar magnet. So recall that any time we have any sort of magnet, that magnet will always have a north pole and a south pole. So magnets exist as dipoles. That is, we have a north pole and a south pole. So this is our north pole and this is our south pole. Now, if we are to draw our magnetic field lines, they will look as follows. So they will form the following loops. And these loops will essentially point beginning at the North Pole and passing through our South Pole as shown by the following regions. So this basically implies that because magnets come as dipoles, meaning we have a North Pole and a South Pole, this implies that magnetic field lines must be continuous as shown in the following region. So, this is a clear distinction from the electric case. Because our positive charge can exist in an isolated form, we see that our electric field lines begin on the positive charge and extend outward. Versus in this case, where our magnetic field lines essentially form the following loops. So let's define the following analogous equation for magnetism. So let's choose a Gaussian surface. So let's choose the following Gaussian surface. So we choose a Gaussian surface as shown by the following green outline. So we see that the number of magnetic field lines that enter our Gaussian surface from the left side is equal to the number number of magnetic field lines that exit this same region on the right side and that implies that because the number of magnetic field lines entering is equal to the number of magnetic field lines exiting, the net magnetic flux through the following green Gaussian region is equal to zero. 
So, our net magnetic flux is equal to the closed integral of the dot product of the magnetic field B and our infinitely small area vector dA is equal to zero. So this is known as Gaussian's law for magnetism. So once again, the reason that this is equal to zero is because a magnet always has a north pole and a south pole. In other words, in the electric case, we can isolate our two types of different electric charges, but in the magnetic case, we can never isolate a north pole and a south pole. Whenever we have a magnet that produces magnetic field lines, that magnet carries a north pole as well as a south pole. And from this equation, we see that our magnetic field lines must form continuous loops as shown in the following diagram.